Paul Legron, where the water meets the shore is our focus tonight in Pinellas County and all throughout Tampa Bay. Global warming and climate change. Those are the phrases, the words and the talking points that you've heard in the news and the headlines. They either grab your attention or turn you off or become like music to a party that you've been to before. Yet there is a subtle and profound change happening here in Tampa Bay. The argument over climate change is now moving away from whether it's actually happening and pivoting toward a more complicated negotiation of what should and can reasonably be done about it. That is the new fault line in this debate, ideal versus practical. And however that contest of perception plays out, the results will set into motion profound consequences that will impact your daily life from your cost of living to your family's health. And tonight, as we embark on this half hour special, we will showcase our efforts over the last two months as our team of reporters have spent several weeks producing in-depth reports on all sides of this impending problem and the deep impact it will have on our growing community. And we begin here tonight with the changing face of flood zones in our region. I spent the last several weeks talking to the experts who are measuring it in real time and the people who are already living it. Our climate is changing. Change is inevitable. If the slow variation continues, we can adapt to it. The Florida property insurance industry has been hit hard in recent years. From hurricanes to floods to fires, paradise has its price. Are you seeing sea level rise? Well, we are seeing blue sky flooding already, yes. Lisa Foster is the floodplain administrator for Pinellas County. She leads the team that helps reduce the risk of flood to thousands of homeowners, a risk that's increasing. What is that data revealing so far? So things change over time, right? Topography changes, building changes, uh, the weather conditions change, uh, so your probability will change over time, as well as the extent of inundation from a flood. We're developing these, these maps so that we can see into the future and plan appropriately for that. It's a future that's happening now. New FEMA flood maps show what flood managers call blue sky flooding, streets underwater when there hasn't been a drop of rain. Nowhere is the impact of climate change and sea level rise felt more acutely than in the coastal communities of Tampa Bay. Communities like here in Paso Grill, near St. Pete Beach, right here along Casablanca Avenue. Here's looking at you, water. What are we looking at here? What is this? Well, we're looking at sea level rise, obviously. David Nixon has lived on the water's edge for 21 years, but the edge wasn't always his front yard. It used to do this two, three times a year. In the last three or four years, I've noticed now it's every month when we get a full moon, because hmm. the tides fluctuate with the moon. On a day when they haven't seen any rain in 34 days, their neighborhood is a wake zone. Look at, look at this person. Is he going to drive right <laughs> through it? Yeah. And he's slowing down. He's going he's to gonna, he's gonna do a California oh. stop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Throws everything, salt water up in people's yards, kills the grass. People visiting out here don't realize this is salt water. Oh, it's a freshwater main break somewhere. I'll just go through it. Have a good day. And it's not enough to make you want to move? No. You just deal with it. I just deal with it. But dealing with it is becoming increasingly expensive for many homeowners in Tampa Bay. Consumers are seeing their insurance rates soar to double-digit increases. And thousands of property owners in Florida are being dropped suddenly by their insurance company. And is that because of climate change or because of intense hurricanes? Unfortunately, there's been things out, outside of our control that is really affecting premiums and our ability to take on additional risk. Jennifer Pentacuda is with AAA. They are not one of the three companies who recently dropped coverage for thousands of Floridians, but she says there are four main reasons causing insurance companies to make that difficult decision, including contractor roofer fraud, claims for past hurricanes, rising reinsurance costs, and what she calls excessive litigation. What should a homeowner do if they are dropped? 
So if you receive a notice that your policy is being canceled, please, please call your licensed insurance agent immediately. You need to verify your policy is active, that you have the right coverage in place to protect your individual home, and that you are with a financially strong insurance carrier. And like the climate itself, flood insurance is about to undergo a major transformational shift. Beginning this October, FEMA is coming out with a new flood risk assessment called Risk Rating 2.0. And that's going to change a lot of insurance rates. It's based on several parameters like the distance to the water, how big the water is, um, how the structure is built. FEMA says Risk Rating 2.0 will correct insurance rate disparities that currently exist. The agency acknowledges on its own website that homeowners in lower valued properties are paying more than their share of risk, while policyholders in higher valued homes are paying less than their share. FEMA says its new data will help set flood insurance rates that are fair and reflect the property's unique flood risk taking into consideration for the first time your home's distance to a flooding source, the types and frequency of flooding, and the unique property characteristics of your home, including the cost to rebuild. But some experts say the easiest solution is to stop doing what we've been doing for hundreds of years, building on the shoreline. And we can start retreating back from the coastline. We can stop having the most heavily developed regions being in the, in the most vulnerable places, which by the way, we've done in the Tampa Bay area. You're basically saying return the coast to nature. Slowly. Dr. Robert Weisberg is an oceanographer with USF. He says we should start incentivizing people to move away from the water. I think we could use our, our brains and instead of thinking we can solve every problem by engineering, maybe we can solve every problem by a slow, systematic, um, uh, funded uh, a retreat from the coastline. I'm not advocating anything radical. You know, whoever lives on the shore here around Tampa Bay, you know, enjoy it. But at some point, don't rebuild there, that's all. Another solution could lie in the bay itself. We've been able to double the amount of seagrasses that we see in our bay today than what we had at that low point back in the in the 80s. Maya Burke is the assistant director of the Tampa Bay Estuary Program, a government partnership between local counties, cities, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Their work on the bed of the bay, restoring natural habitats, is one of the few environmental success stories in the past 40 years. And it draws a direct link to protecting homeowners from future floods and hurricanes. Seagrasses, marshes, mangroves, they're also really good at attenuating wave action. So they slow down those waves so that the coastal flooding that we might otherwise experience is lessened because we have those habitats. It's really interesting that I guess the biggest solution of all is the thing that's right in front of us that we get our namesake from, Tampa Bay itself. It's really central to who we are as a region and all of the work that we've done to invest in improving water quality in Tampa Bay, that's great. That makes us more resilient. Part of that resiliency recently paid off during the leak at the Piney Point facility when millions of gallons of wastewater had to be dumped into Tampa Bay. You know, that was a year's worth of nitrogen delivered to Lower Tampa Bay over the course of about a week or two, and that's huge. But because we've worked so hard to reduce nutrient loads in that part of the bay, you know, perhaps that part has been able to absorb those nutrients a little bit better than it otherwise would. A lot of what we talk about when we talk about climate change is based on a lot of projections. So you yeah. do see the headlines of where, where are we gonna be in 2050? Where are we gonna be in 2080? 2050, 2080? Yeah, I mean, where, where do you see... If it went keeps going like it is, what I've seen in my time here, I believe this, this will all be underwater. 50 years from now, what do you think it's gonna be like here? I think we'll still be here. <laughs> I, I think that flooding will be more in the forefront. I believe that in some areas we may be checking tide charts before we go do our errands. But if we continue on this path of planning for the future, then we might be okay. <laughs>
I know that was a lot to take in, but part of the solution is arming yourself with the most up-to-date and useful information, and we've made it real easy for you to do that. We've provided links to see if you're in a flood zone right now. You can also check your county's current flood insurance maps and the state's insurance rate maps. We've also provided critical links about upcoming deadlines regarding that new 2.0 risk rating study from FEMA that will impact insurance rates in the future in Florida. We've got it all up and running right now on our website, abcactionnews.com.